Hiya. Hello. Welcome to the Geeky Girls Knit Podcast. I'm Cece, also known as Java Pearl. I'm Dami, also known as Dami Stoodles. And we're glad to have you today, here today. Uh, it is Thursday, the 17th of January, 2019, and this is episode 328. We'd like to say a big welcome back. We love you guys. To all our returning viewers, and a big hiya to any new viewers. Thanks for giving us a shot. We hope you enjoy the show. Um, we're still experiencing, it seems like, just a little bit of lag. And I don't, we don't, there's nothing else that we really can do about it. Um, Dami is on the, yeah, well, yeah, I mean, you're on the school internet, and that means there's hundreds and hundreds of people on it. And there's not really anywhere else you could go, because if you went to a coffee shop, then it's loud, et cetera, et cetera. So we're making do the best we can. But stay tuned, because in February, there will be an episode where we are sitting on the couch together over there. It'll be later in the week than normal, but we'll be together. Okay? Okay. Um, Dammy, nobody introduced themselves this week in the Ravelry group. Tell people why they should join our group and how to do it. So you should join our group on Ravelry and introduce yourself in our introduction thread because you'll get a shout out on our next episode and you'll be able to participate in all our owls and giveaways. All right. We're going we're gonna to try to press through this maybe a little faster than normal because I have a toothache and I have a dentist appointment in just a little while. So we're going to make, try to do the best we can in getting it all done before my appointment. So we probably should just go ahead and get started. Yay, dentist. I hate going to the dentist. <laughs> it's going to be okay. All right, here we go. So now we're going to talk about what's on our needles. So what's on your needles, Dammy? So I am still working on the straightforward mitts by Mona Draugr, but um, I'm making a bit of progress. Here's one. Look, it's all off the needle. Wow. Amazing. What? It fell off the needle? Yeah. Yeah, so. Um, it's on I, I, US I, I don't understand what you mean, that it fell off the needle. I didn't say it fell off the needle. I said it's off the needle. Just oh, I thought you said it. I thought you said it fell off the needle, and I was like, what? It fell off the needle strategically. <laughs> okay, so, go ahead um, and tell us about it. Sorry. So it's on US 3's 3.25 millimeter needles, and the yarn I'm using is Penguin Soup and Bursock in the Baker colorway, and I'm casting on the next one to just go at it. Cool. I just named our episode. So if you heard Amazing. typing, that's what I was doing. Um, yeah, you're just like so super busy right now because you're having rehearsals pretty much nonstop yeah. and still trying to finish, fit in class and, um, homework and work and sleep into the midst of all that. So, sleep. Um, I don't know about sleep. Sleep? What is sleep? Sleep. Yeah. I didn't know about sleep last night. I was still awake at like one o'clock. Mm. Fun times. Fun times. All right, is there anything yeah. else on your needles, Dammy? No, so what are you working on? Okay, well, I'm working on my 10 stitch zigzag blanket still. Uh, this is the 10 stitch zigzag pattern by Frankie Brown. It's on US 4's 3.5 mil needles. And I finished the 60th stripe, which was out of Canon Hand Dyes Oscar Sparkle Sock in the Frosty the Snowman colorway. And since, oh, in the, oh, sorry, in the Frosty the Snowman Polar Opposites colorway. Um, and since I changed my number of stripes to 70, that makes me 85.7% done. Ooh. I know. So I started the 61st stripe and you will be happy to know that even though I'm still, I'm knitting again out of Space Cadet Ombre and Gradient Mini Skeins, this one has a colorway name plus numbers. <gasps> it, it's the Headstrong Ombre MS 1404 colorway. I know. So this is again, um, I did this, uh, I did that purple set a few stripes back. So this is five mini skeins, although I think they're like, uh, like 20 grams each or something. I don't know if that's normal for mini skeins because I don't usually use them. Um, because I usually need like 30 to 33, 34 grams of yarn for a stripe. Um, 
but so what I'm going to do is this is going to be two stripes again. So this first stripe, I started with the darkest. I'll go to the, I'll do two zigzags each all the way to the lightest and then do the lightest again all the way back up to the darkest. And then the other stripe will be opposite. It'll be light to dark, dark to light. Um, so that will get me my 61st and 62nd stripe. <sighs> Done. So, and I'm still doing good with one and a half a day. I had to make up yesterday. I don't remember why I, I ran out of time on, I don't know, Tuesday to knit, but I, got, I caught up last night. So um, I'm still on track for finishing it during Stash Dash that starts the 24th of May. I am working on a new pair of socks. Do you know what well, that means? I what what does that mean? I know. I finished. It's crazy. Okay, so these socks are for my bestie Katie's son, Izzy, who is, I believe, turning five. I think. I'm pretty sure. Um, his birthday ah. is in a little over a week, and these are not going to be done in time, but it'll be okay. Yeah, he's the one that he's the one that famously coined the phrase CC socks. So because CC socks for, yeah, for him or for his mom, for his brother, for his dad, whatever. Um, so I'm using my French Fidelic cappuccino sock pattern, but I'm not putting a heel in. So these will be just tube socks because they last longer for the boys. Um, until they get to a stable size, I will continue doing tube socks. I'm on US one and a half, two and a half mil needles. And this yarn might look familiar because I'm using the rest of the yarn from the hub socks that I'm gonna show you in the next segment uh, for this. So this is Pandia's Jewels hand-dyed yarn tweed in an unknown colorway. I'm about halfway through the first sock. And I'm really excited because this is the first year I've been able to knit Izzy's on Zoom Zoom needles because there's enough stitches to make it work. Last year there was not enough stitches. So um, I'm working on that. And then the other thing that I'm working on is my English paper piecing. Um, so here is where we are. So uh, obviously the gray is the center. And then I've got these, this orange fabric with red hearts. And then I just added this brown fabric, which it's just like a floral fabric. But just like the other ones, it will have the lavender hexagon at the top and bottom. Um, but... I was so excited to see the brown actually as part of it that I did that one first yesterday instead of starting with a lavender. So I'm still just doing one hexagon a day and attaching it and yeah, making good progress. So I think I need longer straight pins. Can you see these ones? Mm -hmm. And they're kind of short and I have an issue that they keep falling out and then they're in my lap somewhere or on the couch somewhere and sometimes I can't find them. So I think I want to get one of the package with the, the, the end is like one of those bead round balls. You know which ones I'm talking about? Oh, yes. Yeah, because I think that will work better. So maybe I'll get the Dr. Hubs to run us by Joanne's on Sunday after church and Joanne. see if I can fix them up. So, um, and that is everything that I am working on which means I have some FOs. So let's move on over to that segment. And now we're going to talk about her finished projects. Yes, because I have two this week. So first up is this week's preview hat. The color is not really showing very well. It's a really dark, it's dark blues. Yeah, so this is my second preview hat of 2019. Uh, using my free top-down preemie hat pattern that you can get on Ravelry. It's on US 6's 4 mil needles, and the yarn is Patton's Croy Sock in the Cadet colorway, and I just held it doubled. Um, I wish it would show the color better. <laughs> there you go. That's a little better. So um, there's that. I seem to be in a blue theme recently, apparently. Because I finished the Dr. Hub's mm -hmm. Christmas socks, belated Christmas socks. But they are done. I told him he could not wear them until I showed y'all. So he's been waiting very patiently. These are, like I said, his belated 2018 Christmas socks. Yours are going on the needles next to me after um, Izzy's. Um, using my French Vanilla Cappuccino sock pattern 
on US one and a half, two and a half mil needles, and this is Pantheas Jewels hand dyed yarn tweed in an unknown colorway. And I don't have sock blockers that are his size. So let me show you my little technique. I have these sock blockers that I'm not sure where they came from. Knit I, I, are they from Knit Picks? Uh, I've seen them around multiple places. So these are like the, I think like the seven to nine inch women's size. So instead of having to buy another set in the Dr. Hub size, I flip it upside down and I put the leg into the foot. And there you go, a sock blocker without having to buy a new one. So um, tips and tricks with CC. There you go. And that's everything I finished this week, but I do have some yummies to share with you. So let's move on to the next segment. Now it's time for our favorite part of the show, yummies. What are yummies, Dammy? Yummies are our current favorite things, things we like, things we want to talk to you about. Kinky wanted to tell you what yummies were. Yummies. Really? Oh. Oh. Really? Are you telling Dammy that Bubba Kinky left? I'm telling Dammy every week. And, and I meowed a, such a pathetic meow that Bubba and Mama were crying. It was so sad. <laughs> what are you looking at up there? What are you looking at? Yeah. Oh. oh. I love you, baby. Do you want to tell them anything else? You want your chin to Want your chin scratched? <laughs> yeah, you do. You want your okay. chin scratched? Yeah. All right. Are you ready to get down? You are. Okay, say bye bye, people. Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> and she turned on my screensaver, so hopefully it's still recording. <laughs> it is. Hold on. I got to log back into the computer. But did she just bump to the computer? <laughs> Yes, the table Ooh, costs. still going. You didn't get okay. out or anything. Awesomeness. Well, there you go. Pinky's always a yummy. <laughs> um, okay, so y'all might, might remember um, my friend Yuko of Honeyberry Studios. I love her work. We actually reviewed some of her stuff and did some giveaways of her stuff last year. Well, I'd been waiting for a sticker she had designed that she'd showed on Instagram to be ready to purchase, and it was. So, but she sent me this adorably sweet Happy New Year card. How cute is that? Oh. With a sweet little note inside, and this was the sticker I was waiting for. It's okay if the only thing you did today was breathe. And this is going to go up on our bathroom mirror with her You Are Enough sticker that has succulents around it. But while I was ordering that, I was like, I should order something else. So I ordered her llama sticker to put on my water bottle. How adorable is it? Very. It's very, very cute and very much my colors. And, um, I have her llama 2019 wall calendar on the wall over there. And so it's fun that I've got llamas on this too. So there's a link in the show notes. If you want to check out Yuko's shop, um, it's called Honeyberry Studios. She is in Seattle. She's based in Seattle and I've made a, we've made arrangements to get together um, in a few weeks so she can meet Pink Carl because she loves cats. Yes. All right, Yummy. I love my cat. Knit crate came. The box got kind of dirty. Ooh. I haven't Ooh. even shown you what it. I haven't even shown you what was in it. No. Are you ready? Yeah. This is, it, this is on the uh, Vidlania ambient worsted, and it's a hundred percent Peruvian Highland wool, worsted weight, two hundred and one yards to a hundred grams. This is the Dawn Blush colorway. Oh. 
it's actually a lot more orangey than it's showing. It's not showing true to color. Hmm. Interesting. That's a little bit better. Mm. No, it's still not. It's it's re it's it's an orangey pink. Oh, see now my color's gone crazy. Yeah, that's not. It's not showing true to color at all. It's showing up very pinky red. It is more of a really much of a uh, much more of an orangey pink. And then they sent their um, their um, little magazine. So um, the knit pattern is Shift by Jen Geegly. And it is done on US 11's eight millimeter needles. Um, and it's a cow works seamlessly in the round. Hmm. Oh my goodness, you hold the, so this is already worsted weight yarn and you hold it doubled. To knit with. Yikes, that would hurt my hands a lot. And then the crochet designer is Tanya Bush of Nana's Crafty Home and she designed the Embrace Hand Muff. Ooh. And it's done US H slash eight five millimeter hook. And it uses a balloon stitch. How fun is that? Balloon. And a faux knit edging and a cute pom pom wrist strap. And then the sock pattern is the Winter Light by Laura Phelan Staker. Ooh. And it is uh, done on US ones, two point two five mil needles, um, on a, on their sock uh, base, and it comes in four sizes, and it's knit cuff down. So um, yeah, so if you're interested in getting your own knit crate subscription. You can go to our show notes and click on the link and you can use the coupon code, all capital letters, geeky and the number two zero to get 20% off your first order. And it will only work to discount the first month of a recurring monthly subscription or on any of their shop items. So check it out. Um, all right, Dammy, do we have any other yummies? I don't think so. I don't think so either. So let's talk about hashtag GGK crafty pad. What is it, Dammy? It stands for a Geeky Girls Knit Crafty Photo a Day Challenge. We have a list of photo prompts for each month. So take a look at the prompt for that day, take a picture related to it, and post it any way you like. But we pick our favorites from Instagram. Oh. Somebody is eating her wet food. It's pink down there? <laughs> yes, because Thursday is wet food <gasps> Thursday. Oh. So she's enjoying it because I gave her the rest of the can. And um, for the first time since 2012, you picked out the picture. I did because Dammy had something come up. We were hoping to record earlier than normal just because of my dentist appointment and she had something come up. And so she usually takes care of that part. And I was like, well, let me do this because I can't like finalize the edit of the podcast file without the photos. So I went ahead and did that. So January, the, the prompts list is, you know, the start of a new year goals, um, getting yourself organized, such like that. Side note. Um, so do you remember, I don't know, I guess it's been a couple of years ago when that book came out, um, the life, life giving chain, something of tidying up Marie, Marie Kondo. Yes. So apparently there is a Netflix show now. Yep. Where she goes into people's homes and helps them. Yep. And I kind of want to watch. Do it. I'm watching Hummingbird. I'm sorry. I was like, what are you looking at? There's a hummingbird. Well, fun. You know, your bee mall has like four or five hummingbird feeders. Oh, I know. Yeah, she loves them. Um, yeah, but I'm like the person that, like, I don't know if the show is even still on the air, but it was always so intriguing for me to watch, um, like, hoarders. <laughs> um, and then there was a show... There was a show on TLC where they came in and they helped My you. strange obsession. No, that's not what it is. 
I don't remember what the show was called, but they would come in and there would be like, they would have like, you know, heap sale they need some help. and all that and um, all that stuff. And then like arguing about whether they could keep something and all that stuff. So anyway, I, I, I keep seeing it mentioned. We already are fairly minimalist, especially since we sold pretty much everything we owned before we went to Scotland. So now that we're back, we have like started from scratch pretty much. Um, so we don't have a ton of stuff, but I did even at the beginning of the year, cause I'd kind of gotten out of the capsule wardrobe, um, kind of habit. Um, uh, I went through my closet and purged like an entire garbage bag full to donate to charity. So, um, but <laughs> anyway, I just think it's intriguing. So I, I might watch it just to, just because I'm intrigued. It's the same reason I listened to my favorite murder. So anyway. Our prompts list. So, um, and we'll have the February prompts list will be out by next week. So, um, what are we about to show them, Danny? Two photos from us that we liked and five photos from other people that we liked. Here come the photos. So those were our favorite photos. Great job, everybody. Uh, so it's never too late to join in. You just take a look at the prompt for the day. What is today's prompt? Today's prompt is brown. Dirt. I don't think I'll take a picture of it. It's brown. Oh, I have an idea. I have an idea. Okay. Um, you take a look at the prompt, you interpret it however you want. We are very cheater friendly on this. Um, you post your photo to Instagram, make sure in the caption you use hashtag GDK crafty pad because that's how we find your photos. If you have a private account on Instagram and you are participating in hashtag GDK crafty pad, you need to make sure that Dammy Dammy's doodles is following you because otherwise she, she can't see your photos. So, um, yeah. So just send her a message, make sure she's following you and you're good to go. And yours might get chosen. So upcoming events, Dammy. Two yes. weeks from today. Two Two weeks. Oh gosh. <clears throat> Before the eclipse today. by Anton. <laughs> Before the eclipse by Anton Chekhov is opening at the SPU Theater. Um, come see her. I'm in it. We've got eight, nine shows. I can't remember how many, but it's January 1st, February. January 31st. January 1st. Thirsty. February 1st Thirsty. and 2nd and February 17th and 9th at 7.30. January needs water. And then there's a and then there's a 2 p.m. matinee on the no, a 1 p.m. matinee on the second. Gosh. Yes. Um, I need you to get our tickets. What do you mean? I need you to buy our tickets. Oh. Cause I'm not there. <laughs> so remind me. Um, you can call them. The, huh? I can what? You can call them. You can call them. But you're there. Or buy them online. Isn't there a fee though if you buy them online? I don't think so. I'll look. Okay. Um, and then Madrona Fiber Arts, uh, I'm going to be going to their marketplace. This is um, a retreat that's in Tacoma, Washington. February 14th through 17th. Um, there's a link to their website in the show notes. And I finally have a date for when I will be going. I will be there only on Thursday the 14th. Which means... Thursday. Yes. Love yarn. Um, which means we will not be recording the podcast on Thursday the 14th. But... Oh. Dammy's coming home on Friday the 15th 
And so we'll record then, and the podcast will go live on Saturday instead of Friday. Oh, wait, so we're going to record in the evening? What time does your class get out? 2.50. Well, because Zabby will be at work, so. Um, I think it'll be fine. Maybe your professor will be really nice and cancel class. Or let you out early. Mm. What class mm. is it? You found. Oh, fun. Sometimes. Um, so I will be there on Thursday the 14th. If you see me, say hi. I'm really bad with names, but I have a good memory for Ravatars. And so if you could tell me your Ravelry name and help me associate it with your Ravatar, I might remember. But I'm really bad. It's the fibromyalgia. I have trouble. So it's not that I don't want to remember your name. It's that my brain just doesn't. So. Um, okay, and I think that's everything for events, so let's move on to the next segment. And now we're going to talk about what we are reading, watching, and listening to. So what are you reading, Dami? So I am reading so many things. I am reading Respect for Acting by Uta Hagen, Il Trovatore. Are, are you, are you, are that you now respecting acting because you're reading the yes. book? Yes. Or did you not have respect for acting until you read the book? No. Oh, okay. That's what I thought. Yeah. El Tobitor by Verdi, Secret Deposits by April Yamasaki, Blood Brothers by Elias Shakur, and The Glass Scientists, which is a webcomic by Sabrina Kachingo. And I know with all of that, even if you were only reading three minutes a day in each of those, you were getting your 15 minutes a day in. Yeah. So what am I referring to? The January, February, March, Rowl, read along. Yes. So this is a challenge for you to read 15 minutes a day. I don't care what you read as long as you're reading. Audiobooks do count. Uh, all the details are in the show notes and in the Ravelry group. So we're doing a January, February, March one, but we're also doing a 2019 yearly one. So all, I'm, I'm not going to tell you all the details again because we've talked about it repeatedly, but all the details are in the show notes and um, in the Ravelry group. If you have any questions, just send us a message and we're happy to help. And there will be prizes at the end. I mean, there's prizes in every quarter, but there will be big prizes at the end of the year. So, um, and then I finished reading almost everything, Notes on Hope by Anne Lamott. And I have started reading The Road Back to You, An Enneagram Journey to Self-Discovery by Ian Morgan Cron and Suzanne Stabile. And I'm really enjoying that, learning a bit more about each of the nine Enneagram types. I'm rereading Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, which is the third book in the Harry Potter series by J.K. Rowling. I'm reading along with Harry Potter and the Sacred Text podcast and Switch and Flick and All Potter podcast. Um, I've, the last chapter I read is The Marauder's Map, and I've listened to Sacred Text this morning, but I haven't listened to Switch and Flick yet. So I'm making good progress. I'm trying to get like two to three chapters in a week and then also listen to uh, their, their ones. But I'm eventually going to catch up with Swish and Flick because they are behind where Sacred Text is. And so then I'll have to be doing it like on one chapter a week once I catch up. So, uh, but I have a little bit mm -hmm. of to, before I get there. So I finished reading books one and two of the Anna Pigeon series by Nevada Barr, which is, I talked about this one last week about the, she works in national parks. I read a book that totally didn't end the way I thought it was going to end called Before the Fall by Noah Hawley. And it's about a plane crash into the ocean. And there's like 11, I think there's 11 people on board and only one guy and a little boy who's like three or four survive, but it's in the middle of the ocean and he swims them like 20 some odd miles to land. But then there's all this, 
you know, with our news cycles, there's all this, you know, they're trying to find out who the guy, who this guy really is and all this, he's an artist and all this such. And, um, yeah. And yeah, I did not, I didn't see the ending coming when they finally figured out who did it, who was the cause, what was the cause. So yeah. And then last night while I was having insomnia, I read, you Don't Own Me, which is the sixth book in the Under Suspicion series by Mary Higgins Clark and Alifair Burke. Really good. Also didn't see that ending coming. But it was really good. I enjoyed it. So that's everything I am reading, watching. Let me tell you about some TV. Hold on. Let me get, let me get a little sip of water here. Oops. I guess I filled it too full. Okay. Movies. I watched One Winter Proposal, which was a Hallmark movie, and it was like, it was a sequel to one, I think, from last year, and as the title suggests, it was winter, and there was a proposal. Mm. The Lost World, I finished watching season one, and I'm watching season two. I've been seriously binging these. I was having a really tough week last week, and... Mm. Um, it, I, thank you so much to everybody who reached out. Um, so I ended up doing a lot of sitting in the couch, binge watching and knitting. So, yeah. Um, watching season 16 of NCIS, watching season 14 of Criminal Minds, and they have announced that season 15 will be the last season of, of Criminal Minds, and it's only going to be 10 oh. episodes and they are going to record it immediately following their finishing filming of season 14. Mm. So, um, the, of course, there's all the questions about whether Hodge will be come back after he got fired because of um, the charges against him. I feel fairly certain that they'll bring... Um, Oh, what's his name that Penelope is in love with? More. Morgan. Yeah. Morgan. Morgan. Yeah. He's, I mean, he's come back several times already since he left the show full time. So I imagine they'll bring him back. Um, but it'll be interesting to see. I mean, 15 years of the show, there's lots of people that could be brought back. Um, yeah. Watching season 12 of Big Bang Theory. Series eight of Death in Paradise that just restarted. Um, so I'm watching that. Season six of Blacklist. Season four of Blind Spot. A huge portion of this episode was happening in Jane's brain. Wow. Oh. So they did this procedure to wake up the, the part of her brain that is her. And so now she knows she's Jane again. And then. She kills Shepard. Oh. Yeah. Uh, okay. Shepard Shepherd was attacking, um, what's his name? Kurt. Kurt was trying to, trying to uh, kill Kurt, and Jane ended up killing Shepard. And Reed arrested Zapata. Oh. Yeah. Now, let me tell you, season 10, I see I'm about to cry right now, season 10 of NCIS LA, I had seen a news article that this was an extremely emotional episode for Kinsey's character. I sobbed, like, gut-wrenching sobs through this gut episode. Gut-wrenching? Gut-wrenching sobs through this episode. <laughs> so... What had happened without getting too graphic is this guy was trying to obtain information or had obtained a flash drive of information that proved that a head government official in a foreign country had um, ordered chemical attacks on his own people. And one of his generals or whatever chased him down to get the flash drive 
pushed him against a wall with the front of a car and left him there. NCIS and FBI and police and all everybody are on the scene. And they discover that the second they move the car, he's going to die. There's nothing they can do. Mm. But they kept him alive long enough for him to be able to give them information and everything and for them to locate his wife so she could talk to he could talk to her one last time gosh i'm gonna cry and we also found out that his son his like eight-year-old son was killed in one of those chemical attacks yeah it was yeah it was gut-wrenching so yeah um I hope they will continue to show how the situation affected Kinsey because she was right there with him and held his hand almost the entire time. So um, they did get the general. They did get the flash drive, but it had been erased. But they didn't tell him it had been erased because they didn't want him. They wanted him to have a peaceful, as peaceful passing as possible. So... And then Call the Midwife is back, Series 8. We finished watching NCIS LA, and the next thing we had to watch was Call the Midwife. And I was like, I was like, Bubba, I can't do this. I can't, I can't watch Call the Midwife right after this episode because you know I cry every episode when we watch of Call the Midwife. So we watched season 12 of Murdoch Mysteries instead, which did not make me cry. So, um, but we're also watching Series 8 of Call the Midwife. Um, it's interesting. So Trixie, the actress that plays Trixie mm -hmm. was actually pregnant in real life while they were filming. And so it's it, knowing that it's funny to watch how they're having to strategically do things to keep it, um, keep that pregnancy not shown because yeah, mm -hmm. obviously they, they didn't, could not write that into that character at this point. So and then Outlander season four episode was called If Not for Hope. Um, I thought that the, when it started, I was getting so angry because I thought they had deviated like 180 degrees from what happened in the book. Because they started the episode, because remember I told you the last, last week, the last part of the episode he was holding his hand up to the standing stone to go through. Mm -hmm. Well, the episode started with him taking a shower in present day. I mean, there was a bathtub, there was a silver shower head, et cetera, et cetera. And it went on for, I don't know, probably 20, 30 seconds. And I was just getting livid. And then they brought it to where he was like, he'd gotten recaptured by the Indians and uh, was, they were forcing him to, you know, everybody was washing up in the river. And he, so he had been like, kind of thinking that. And they showed that to, I was going to be mad. I was going to be like, no, 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 no. How did Diana Gabaldon agree to this? Because, I mean, they've made some changes. I mean, that, that's just the, that's, that's, that's what happens. You know, you have a book that, in, that um, inspires a movie or a TV series or whatever. They have to change things. You cannot take an entire book. Well, for example, Harry Potter, you can't take a five, six, 700 page book and fit every little thing into a two and a half hour movie. It's just they impossible. They fit it into two movies. Yeah, but they still didn't do everything. Um. So, um, but yeah, I was going to be, so livid. And then Lord John Gray to the rescue. So he and Brianna are engaged now. Hmm. Uh, he's, he's helping her while they wait to see if Claire and Jamie and young Ian can bring Roger back alive from the Mohawks. And then, so what happened was, because she is at um, Aunt Jocasta's house. 
and so Angie Costa like has this like conversation with her about what is going to happen for her baby and how her baby is going to be treated if she has this baby out of wedlock because even though they were hand fast there was no witnesses and when you hand fast you have to you have to make the decision to you, there's like a year and a day to make a decision about whether to marry officially or not so she's technically not married even though they did the hand fast so um so aunt jacosta throws this dinner party and of course everybody that comes to the dinner party is single men i mean there's women too like their mother or their sister or whatever but so she's trying to find a suitor for for brianna one of the suitors i watched i watched the episode three once and then i watched it again and I, as i was watching i was like that the scenes with the dinner party i was like gosh um that guy he looks familiar but he doesn't I can't figure out, there was like some reason that I was like, wait, why, I couldn't place it. And then I realized that it was Billy Boyd who played Pippin in Lord of the Rings. And of course his character is so much different in Lord of the Rings that it just totally threw me and my brain couldn't make that connection. So, and then uh, Murtaugh and Stephen Bonnet are in jail. Mm -hmm. Remember Jamie asked Murtaugh to get Bonnet? Well, mm -hmm. uh, Fergus and Murtaugh found Bonnet, but the military guys, the law, whoever it was, the law came upon Murtaugh trying to take, um, take Stephen Bonnet away and they both got arrested. So we shall see about that. And then Roger, they make it to the village and he's undergoing some kind of ritual, but he can't understand what's going on, and he's getting beat up by, like, all the men in the tribe. So, and there's only two more episodes in season four. But it's already been renewed for season five and six. So. Um, and then listening to my favorite murder podcast, so the, their new episode came out this morning, and it was actually really interesting. They had Conan O'Brien on as a guest and he's just started a podcast as well, but um, they're talking, they were talking with him about the fact that he is a murderino and is very interested in, it was a really interesting conversation to see this like guy that we know from like a late show, like talk about like this passion and interest he has about around murder. So um, it was a really good episode as always their episodes have are loaded with language so don't listen if you can't handle that um listening to the enneagram and coffee podcast what have you been listening to kevin <laughs> yeah oh and i need to try to remember to put it in i've been listening to a enneagram type 4 spotify playlist mm. and it's really really good there's one song oh hold on what's it called because it was like, oh my gosh, this is so good. Um, is it by Sleeping at Last? No, but that song is on that playlist. Um, it is. Rescue by Lauren. Is it Daigle? D-A-I-G-L-E. I don't know. It is so good, damn You should listen to it because you're a four too. You probably enjoy this playlist. It does have a sleeping and last on it. Um, it has Gunger. It has Sarah Bareilles. It has lots of people that I've never heard of. Birdie, Clean Bandit, Alec SM Sierra. It's Why got, don't you put it in the show notes? I know I should put it in there for me so I remember. Um, it's got Nina Simone. Don't let me be misunderstood. Oh, that's so good. Anyway, it's it's a really um, it's a really good playlist. Um, so I've been listening to that as well, and that is everything. Gosh, I feel like I've been rambling on, but there was just so much emotion in the television this week. So much emotion. So uh, I think we are ready. Unless you have anything else to move on to the next segment. Mm -hmm. 
All right, let's do it. And now we're going to talk about our December, January, February, walking in a winter wonderland. Walking in a winter wonderland. Al, there we go. Go for it. Tell us about it. Okay. Tell us. So this started on the 1st of December and it runs to the 28th of February and it's for any project that you can knit, crochet, weave, or spin that you can convince us is related to winter. Your fallback is you made it in the winter. Yes. So there are two-ish main rules for this owl. The first is that no whips are allowed so your project that you enter must be begun no earlier than the 1st of December and finished no later than the 28th of February. Yes. You look like you were going to say something. Okay. No, I was trying to, I had to switch headphones. And so the mm. sound, I'm just trying to get the, the volume level to where it needs to be in my ear. I thought mm. it sounded warbly. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. Go and for then it. The, the other main rule is that each project of at least 20 yards that you finish and post in the Ravelry FO thread counts as one entry into the giveaways. But if your project is not at least 20 yards, you need to group it in a single post with other projects that together total at least 20 yards. Yeah. Um, you, you can feel free to poly dip and other laws as long as it fits in with those other rules, including the great podcaster graph together. And we've got a link to that in our show notes for the group. And we've got lots of lovely prizes on the screen right now. Yay. Thank you <laughs> to our donors. And if you would like to donate one, um, wait, no, no, first. No, if you like first. If you would like to donate one, PM Java Pearl on Ravelry or email us at geekygirlsnet at gmail.com. And if you would like to see larger photos of these prizes or look at the shops where they came from, you can go to our show notes, geekygirlsnet.com. What is Pink doing? That's right. I was trying to see because we talk about them in detail also on the first podcast of the month, but that's still going to be like three weeks away. So, so, all right. So, you must be a member of the Geeky Girls Knit Podcast group on Ravelry in order to participate. There is a hashtag if you would like to tag your projects or post on social media. Hashtag GGKWinter1819. Um, the FO thread is going to be locked on the, for- on the morning of the 1st of March, and winners will be drawn for the next podcast following that. And any winners will have 30 days to claim their prize, or they will forfeit it. There's also a chatter thread on Ravelry where we can encourage each other and where I give shout outs to people who finished projects. But I also do that here. So why don't I do that? Yes, do it. Go. I'm becoming Candace. I'm becoming my acting teacher. Does she do that whole thing? Yeah, and she says shut the front door, ironically. <laughs> I love her. Okay, so people okay. who finished projects. DG White, Elsa and M, Philippa MC, Fran Meister, Joe Dadaya, Kersey S, Knit Central, Knit Princess 83, Knitter Chow, Elle McCall, Little Mermaid, Mystery Sewer, New Fee Mom 39, Russ Strauss, Share 2014, Shirley Knits 123, Silver Luna 2112, One Swept Monique, and Young Smith Dory. Great job, everybody. So you still have. About a month and a half to go to finish projects for this owl, so keep working on them and get them posted. All right, let's move on to the next segment. And now it's time for Ask the Geeky Girls, a part of our show where you ask us things and we try to answer them. We do try. We try our very, very best. So, (laughs) Dammy, what is this week's question? This week's question is from Jessica, who is Silver Luna 2112 from Connecticut. Connected. Do they play a lot of connect for in Connecticut? Connect I don't know. I can, is it no. connect I cut? Yes, that's how you spell it. Connect I cut. Yes. So, Cece, since you listen yes. to MFM, My Favorite Murder, have you figured out if you were more of a Karen or Georgia? Wink. Well, let me tell you. I'm actually kind of a mix of the two. <laughs> So, um, so Karen is like 10 years older than Georgia. So Georgia is like Aunt Carrie's age. They were born in the same year. So the relationship between Kara and Georgia is almost the same age gap as between me and my, one of my closest friends, Mel, who lives here on the peninsula. And so, so that's been interesting. So with that fact, I relate more to Karen 
Now, Georgia has an intense love and passion for cats. Hmm. She has three. Elvis and Mimi. El Elvis and Mimi and Dottie. Elvis is the Siamese who always meows at the end when they say Elvis on a cookie. Wow. Um, so that part there. But um, I mean, obviously, like, Karen is a stand-up comedian. I mean, she comes from that. She's a writer. She writes comedy shows. Um, things like that. Georgia did, like, cooking shows and such like that. So I don't, I, I don't know. I guess in that regard, I feel more like Georgia because, like, we do knitting show, you know, that kind of thing. But I don't know, like, physically and um, kind of Karen's um, take on body image and things like that, I relate a lot more to her in that arena. So I'm a mix of the two, apparently. So I can't decide whether I'm a Karen or a Georgia. So how about if y'all listen, if you listen to my favorite murder, am I more of a Karen or a Georgia from what you know of me? And are you more of a Karen or a Georgia? So tell us in the episode thread, because we would love to hear it. Dammy doesn't listen to the podcast, so she doesn't know whether she's a Karen or a Georgia. I know about the cats. Yeah, you do know about the cats, because I show you the cats all the time. Um, yeah. So, that was the question. Did I answer the question, Dammy? Sure. <laughs> okay, good. Thank you so much to Jessica for the question. Dammy, if somebody has a question for us, what should they do? Go to our Ask the Geeky Girls thread in our Ravelry group and post it. All right, we'll be right back. We made it. I don't Yay. know if we did it. I don't know if we did it quickly, like I said we were going to, but I still have a little bit of time before I have to leave. So hopefully, I can get this all edited before I have to go to the dentist. Um, huh. We have. We don't have any announcements, do we? No. I love my cat. Yes, who's sleeping on the couch right now? Um. We were discussing just before I hit the record button about recording the week of Dammy's show for because um, opening night is on a Thursday and Dr. Hubs and I are going over to see opening night. Um, so we'll, we'll, we will know by next week's episode whether we are moving the recording to a different day of that week or not. So we will record. Just stay tuned to figure out when you will get the episode. So, um, okay. We like to. We would like to say a huge thank you. We love you guys. Wow. To everyone who supports the podcast, no matter how it is that you support us, you're amazing. We would not be doing this podcast if it was not for y'all. And um, I've gotten some really sweet notes recently, thanking us for doing the podcast, and that meant a lot, especially with the bad week I had last week uh, with my mental health. So thank you. We love you guys, and we're so grateful for y'all. Um, but we are especially thankful for those of you who support the podcast financially because, unfortunately, it does take money to do the podcast. So um, there's three main ways you can support the podcast financially. First is Patreon, which is a website where you pledge a certain amount a month to your favorite creatives, um, and you earn rewards based on your level of donation. And... I had already sent out Patreon stuff last week when we recorded. So I may have just forgot to mention it. Um, so yeah, so you can do that. So if you'd like to know more information or want to sign up to do that, tell me where do they go. Patreon.com slash geeky girls knit. That's right. What's another way? There's a PayPal button in the sidebar of our website if you'd like to make a one-time donation. And we are uh, Amazon.com.co.uk and .ca affiliates. If you're going to shop on Amazon, if you click through the geekygirlsknit.com website first, um, and there's in the, either the bottom of the show notes or in the sidebar, there's images for Amazon.com.co.uk and .ca. You click the appropriate one, it'll take you to your Amazon for your country, and you shop. It, 
we get a little money back based on what you purchase. It doesn't cost you anything extra. That's a great way to support the Pirate Cast by doing something you're already going to be doing anyway. So, um, yeah. So, Dammy, why don't you tell them where they can find us online? You can find us at geekygirlsnet.com. There are their links to everywhere else where you can find us online. YouTube, iTunes, Ravelry, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, etc. That's right. Well, with that, we're going to tell you goodbye. I'm going to go try to edit this podcast before I go to the dentist because I don't know that I'm going to be feeling up to editing a full podcast after I go to the dentist. So, wish me luck. Um, but although by the time you see this, I'll have already gone to the dentist. So, um, wish me luck retroactively. Right? Um, we hope you have a great rest of your week. Uh, we love you guys. You're amazing and happy knitting. And we'll talk to you again soon. Bye. called lemon lime well it is in the uk i told people about lemon lime here and they're like it's called what now oh oh like uh it's kind of like a sprite seven up i'm confused i don't no. know what you're talking about the name of the facial exercise oh lemon lime ah oh, okay i thought you but were talking just about like we just call it stretching our face <laughs> Oh, like, I, thought you're you, boring. I thought you were talking about the drink because like seven up or Sprite over there is called like lemon lime. So, okay. We are recording.